Welcome to this revision screencast for AQA GCSE Chemistry Unit 2 Part 1 about structure and bonding. But let's start by reviewing atomic structure. Here we have the uh, structure of a sodium atom. You can see it has a central nucleus containing protons and neutrons. Remember, protons are positive, neutrons have no charge, they're neutral and there are electrons orbiting around the outside of the atom in so-called shells. The first shell can contain a maximum of two electrons, the second shell contains a maximum of eight electrons, and the third shell also a maximum of eight electrons. So the sodium atom having 11 electrons, you start filling up from the middle, so the first shell has two in, that's full, then you start filling up the second shell that has eight, and then that's full, and then finally the eleventh electron goes into the third shell. So sodium is said to have an electron configuration of 2, 8, 1. Now, if we uh, have a little peek inside this atom, you can see the electrons are orbiting around the outside. It looks quite complicated, doesn't it? That's why we draw the, uh, the shells on. But you can see the nucleus there containing the protons and the neutrons. Atomic structure we need to know that we've got a central nucleus containing positive protons and neutral neutrons with electrons orbiting around the outside and we need to remember that 288 each the, the maximum number of electrons in each of the first three shells a compound is what is formed when two or more elements are chemically combined so those substances I've listed there which of those are compounds well, the first one, H2O, that's water, that's a compound because it's got hydrogen and oxygen atoms joined together. N2, nitrogen, that's two of the same kind of atoms joined together. So that's only got one element in there, so that's not a compound. NH3, uh, that's a substance known as ammonia. You can see two different elements in there, nitrogen, hydrogen, so that's a compound. CH4. I hope you recognise that one as methane from the topic on oil. Uh, methane is a compound because it's got two elements in there, carbon and hydrogen. Sulphur, S8, no, that's an element. More than one atom joined together, but only one sort. And then finally, that one at the bottom, C2H5OH, that is ethanol. So, a compound, two or more elements chemically combined. Um, ionic bonding takes place between a metal and a non-metal. So let's have a, an example here. Let's look at a uh, sodium atom. There it is. We're not showing the, the nucleus anymore. We're just showing the electron shells. Let's look at how sodium bonds to chlorine. Now, chlorine is in group 7. It's on the other side of the periodic table. A non-metal, it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. I'm going to change it so that its electrons are shown as crosses. Not because they're different to the electrons in sodium, but because uh, it's easier to see what's going on. Right, when a sodium atom bonds to a chlorine atom, what happens is this. The sodium atom gives up its outer electron. And the reason it does this is that gains it a complete electron shell so that it has an electron structure like the noble gases. So this one here is uh, got the electron structure of neon. And you can see, having lost a negative electron, still got positive protons in the nucleus, overall it's got a positive charge because it's got one more proton than it has uh, electrons. Chlorine, on the other hand, has done the opposite. It has become more stable because its outer shell is now complete, contains eight electrons, and because it's got now gained an extra negative electron, still got the same number of positive protons as it has be had before, uh, so overall that's got a negative charge. Because they've got opposite charges, there's a strong force of attraction between them that holds them together, and that's what an ionic bond is. So in sodium chloride, that's what we see. This is referred to as a dot-cross diagram, which you may be required to draw in the exam. Let's look at another example. This time we'll look at uh, oxygen and magnesium. Magnesium is in group 2, has 2 electrons in its outer shell. Oxygen is in group 6, has 6 electrons in its outer shell. Once again, I'm going to show the electrons in the 
uh, in the non-metal as crosses, just so you can see what's going on. Magnesium has got two electrons in its outer shell. Now it could fill this outer shell up by gaining another six, but that's rather harder than just losing these outer two. The oxygen, on the other hand, is in the opposite position. It has two gaps in its outer shell, which it would like to fill. By doing that, it would become more stable. It would get the electron structure of a noble gas. So here we go. The electrons are transferred across. The magnesium now forms a 2 plus ion because it's lost two electrons. The oxide ion has a 2 minus charge because it's gained two electrons. So again, there's a strong force of attraction because of these opposite electrical charges that holds the ions together. Once again, though, you notice there's one of each type of ion, but that's not always true. Let's look at another example. Let's look at magnesium again, but let's see what happens when magnesium bonds with chlorine. When that happens, let's change those to crosses. When that happens, the magnesium is able to give away its first electron to the chlorine. The chlorine is now stable because it's got full outer shell. It's become a negative ion because it's gained an extra negative electron. This now is unable to accept any more electrons because all the positions are full. The magnesium, on the other hand, is not quite stable yet because although it's lost one electron, it's still got one more to get rid of. It, it needs another chlorine atom to be able to do that. So here's another chlorine atom. The magnesium is then able to give away this outer electron to another chlorine atom so that now we have two chloride ions for every one magnesium ion. So the formula for magnesium chloride would be MgCl2 because there are two chlorine atoms. Let's try one more. Let's have a look at what happens when uh, an alkali metal such as sodium forms an oxide, so reacting with oxygen. The sodium has got one electron in its outer shell and so gives up that electron to an oxygen. So the sodium ion is now stable because it has full electron shells. It's got the electron configuration of a noble gas. Oxygen, on the other hand, the oxide ion is not yet stable because there's still one more gap here. It needs another electron from somewhere else. So this time it will need another metal ion. So in this case the sodium, here we go, another sodium atom gives up its electron to the oxide ion. The oxide ion now is stable. It's gained two electrons, which made it a minus two ion, and it's gained those two electrons, one from each of two sodium atoms. So the formula for sodium oxide would be Na2O. We've been just looking at ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is where you get ions forming, and it always involves a metal and a non-metal. So if you see a compound and it contains a metal element from the left-hand side of the periodic table and a non-metal from the right-hand side of the periodic table, you can tell it's going to be ionically bonded. Metals on the left-hand side of the periodic table, they lose electrons and in so doing form positive ions. The opposite happens to non-metals on the right-hand side of the periodic table. They gain electrons to form negative ions. Uh, Atoms form ions because they want to gain the electronic structure of a noble gas. In other words, any shell with electrons in is complete. That makes them more stable. And an ionic bond is this strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. So here are some, some common ions. In the exam you may well be provided with a list on a separate sheet or at the start of the question, and you're expected to be able to work out the formula of an ionic compound given that information. So, for example, if we were going to work out what's the formula of sodium chloride, we'd look and see sodium is Na+, plus, chloride is Cl-, minus. so one of each, the formula is NaCl. Or magnesium oxide, we looked at that one, didn't we? The magnesium ion is a 2 plus, the oxide ion is a 2 minus, so one of each 
that gives us MgO as the formula of magnesium oxide. You notice um, how the ions have the superscripted 2 plus or 1 plus or 1 minus there, but when you write the formula of the compound, you don't show the formula of the ions, you just have the, the, the symbol there. It's a common misunderstanding of students to write in the minuses and the pluses when you're writing the formula of ionic compound, and that's unnecessary. We just want to uh, show the number of ions you need to, to overall have a neutral charge. So let's have another one, potassium sulfide. The sulfide ion, as you can see from the list there, has got a 2 minus charge. The potassium has got a 1 plus charge. So if I had one of each, I'd only have 1 plus to get against a 2 minus. So overall, it's still got a, a minus 1 charge. So I need two potassium ions to cancel out the minus 2 of the sulfide. So the formula is K2S. Notice the name, sulfide, sulfur, and oxygen, and chlorine. Change their name slightly when they're ions, and they have a, an, an ending there, I-D-E. However, you notice at the bottom of the list, there are some uh, ions that have a name ending in 8. If you see a name ending in 8 like that, you know that there is oxygen in there. So sulfate is a compound ion containing sulfur and oxygen. Carbonate contains oxygen and carbon. So the, the clue there is in the name. So don't get sulfide and sulfate, for example, mixed up, a common misunderstanding. So let's have a look at magnesium sulfate. The sulfate ion, as you can see from the list there, has got a minus two charge. The magnesium has got a plus two charge. So the two cancel each other out. So the formula of magnesium sulfate would just be MgSO4. One more. Let's look at sodium carbonate. Sodium, Na plus, a one plus charge. Carbonate has got a two minus charge. So that means to cancel out the 2 minus charge, we need two lots of the sodium ion because they've each only got a charge of 1 plus. So therefore the formula of sodium carbonate is Na2CO3.